Hey, Joan. I am here with Joan Ford today on Sewing in Slippers with Sue. It's so nice to have a guest on Sewing in Slippers so we can talk about all things quilty. Joan and I have been friends for years and we have been in this quilting world as quilting professionals for many, many, many years. I don't want to date us, Joan, but oh, how long we're have long. We're not that old. How long have you been quilting? Uh, uh, well, actually, I just had my quilt birthday. <gasps> I started quilting oh. on February 8th, 2003. So oh, I'm my goodness. 20, I'm 20 quilty years old. That's You're 20 quilty years old. Isn't that great? And it's so, funny that I know the date because... Um, that's. I was just going to ask you, how in the heck do you remember the date well, you started I, quilting? I, I, I wouldn't if I didn't take a class that day. I, I remember I asked for a sewing machine at Christmas the year before, and I went and I picked out a very inexpensive, very, very basic sewing machine, and it ended up under the tree. My husband got it for me. Oh, good. I wanted it, I wanted it to finish knitted sweaters. I was making um, Norwegian-style sweaters. And my girlfriend, Amy, said, you should probably try to use that to make some quilts. And I actually, I contacted her and she signed me up. She told me about a class at the local quilt shop. I signed up for that. And that was on February 8th, 2003. Wow. So that's, I kind of remembered that and then put it in my books. And it's just sort of been a, it's kind of been ingrained in my head. Okay, that's so cool that you remember the date. I have no clue. I know it was in 76 that I started quilting, but that's all I can remember. And well, of course, I was only a kid at the time, so. Well, and of course, a child. Just yeah, first, I believe. just a baby, right? Just just out of the womb. <laughs> well, and it's, it's funny, though, because when I bring that up, I made some posts on my social media stuff and uh, all the memory people talk about that the same thing you know like they don't necessarily remember the date but they remember the year and and the the things that follow on to that are also positive like i remember my mother showed me this or you know my aunt uh did this and it, it's like all of these positive happy memories all of a sudden yeah. is from that first uh time you put needle to thread or that first time you open up the seams and everything matched and yeah it's, it's such a cool hobby that it's it's kind of nice to have a um a milestone to look on to look back on so you started quilting um a little bit later than i did does that mean that was there was nobody quilting in your family that introduced you to it you took I, a class yeah at the time my my dad was alive i asked him if there was anybody in the family and the only thing he recalled so i did not learn from anybody other than the local quilt shop uh, okay. My dad said that there was, he grew up uh, in a, a rural Pennsylvania and there were chickens and things in the backyard. And I think that he, uh, somebody in his family would make um, the, take the feathers and stuff them into oh. things. But, uh, you know, I'm not, I, I, I don't have, um, to my knowledge, any formal quilting um, in my ancestry. No. That is really interesting, the whole feather thing. And raising <laughs> chickens has become such a big hobby that maybe maybe this is something that'll come back, right? Using the feathers to stuff things? <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I don't, uh, I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not out buying a chicken coop, let me put it that way. Well, I'm but Joan, but there. Joan, you have birds. I, I, can, birds I can hear them. So you don't have chickens? No, what kind no of what kind of birds do you have? Um, our community uh, 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 agreements and stuff. Plus, I, 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 if I look out here, I'm sort of sitting in a in a um, fish bowl, and out my back window is just nothing but woods. So we have um, foxes and coyotes. So oh, okay. The so chickens would have a rough time. A lot of predators for those chickens. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you have. So you have all your birds inside the house. I can hear somebody back there. Who am I hearing? Oh, you're hearing Peaches. That's, she's, uh, come on, Peach. She's the old queen of the house. She, oh, look at her. Isn't she beautiful? Blue-fronted Amazon parrot. And she is 40 years old. So uh, she's older than my quilt birthday. Uh, wow. She was uh, just recently hatched. She was actually wild caught before they hand raised them. 
Um, but she um, she talks, but probably not now because, of course, when she's she doesn't like to perform on camera. Well, she does uh, sometimes, but definitely not predictably. Um, so she's uh, she's probably chirping in the back. Background. Oh, look at those beautiful colors. A couple, yeah, she does. She's got. Oh my gosh, isn't she gorgeous? Red wings, and she's got the blue. Say hi, Peach. Hey, Peaches. <laughs> hi, Peaches. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> so um, she's been around. She's uh, basically uh, all kinds. Of, she's watched me pick up all different kinds of hobbies. But then I also have a couple of Conyers who are not in the room right now because they are so noisy. They can uh, they can be quiet as church mice when I'm sitting here working in my office. Uh, but then as soon as a fox shows up in the backyard or a hawk, uh, they have to alert the neighborhood. So uh, <laughs> they're, they're in another room taking a nap. Oh, well, thank you for doing I that. Can't, I can't uh, exclude the parakeets. Uh, during the pandemic, during uh, the 2020 year, Dave was home a lot, and so he was at the front window, and he heard this unusual sound, and this parakeet had flown into our yard. <laughs> oh! So he managed to um, uh, get it to step onto a stick. I grabbed an extra cage because, of course, you have them. White House, because there's extra cages here. So um, that he, parakeet knew exactly where to go. He exactly. <laughs> So he uh, was anxious to get in the cage and, and be safe again, where there's there's predictable food sources hanging in places where he could find. Rather than yeah. Oh my goodness! What? So you're a parakeet rescuer? Uh, no, I just, <laughs> was, just Dave is the parakeet rescuer. I I just happened to equip the cage, and of course, the parakeet needed a girlfriend, so he's he's got a friend now too. Oh, so sweet. So Joan, Joan. In the end. <laughs> I I know that this bird hobby of yours has really um, kind of influenced your business in a big way. So tell yeah. me about Hummingbird Highway. Uh, so Hummingbird Highway probably uh, is best. So it's, the company is about not quite 20 years old, maybe about 17, 18 years old. And uh, it started basically with some of the scrappy stuff. I'm, I'm not really a big fan of formal scrappy quilts where, uh, you know, just kind of reach in a bag and whatever you get, you get. I kind of like organized quilts. And I, I ended up writing a whole process called the Scrap Therapy Series. And it, it basically, there are three books in the Scrap Therapy book series. Um, so um, these address the scrap issue. We all have leftovers, right? So mm -hmm. I process to cut the scraps into, um, sizes that made sense that played well together and then made projects from them and then I, that sort of evolved um uh into um i don't know a, a kind of a passion project i used all that experience with the detailed sewing and stitching to challenge myself to create really detailed bird blocks and that was a program that went on for five years um a new bird kit delivered every month, so it was kind of a membership program. You can see kind of behind me one of the one of the projects. Of, oh yeah, is that a seagull? That is a seagull. That is a laughing gull, um, and it's on a little bag there back on my counter. Yeah, nice. So that's one of sixty birds in a series that were introduced one per month. Well, that series has ended. Actually, it just ended back in December. And it's now converted into a program called the After Flock. And again, similarly, a new bird is delivered every month, but it's not brand new. It's uh, members in the After Flock can select um, their, their their choice of, of kits and have it delivered every month. Rather than oh, that's fun. Coming, uh, on their own. So that's that's something that's uh, that's ongoing exciting. for you. And what's interesting about it, and you know, one of the things that I did when I when I started this thing is I, I challenged myself to make really detailed um, bird blocks that didn't represent just the, the common, lots of people have bird quilts, right? So we always see the cardinal, we always see the uh, blue jay and, and chickadees and yeah, and all that stuff. And those are definitely included in the different blocks. But I also want to include the birds that you don't necessarily see, you know, like kind of create a life list of birds. So the laughing gull, for example, the pelican, 
uh, western tanage or highlighted woodpecker. We just this just 60 different birds. Wow. Uh, that, so it creates a really cool collection. I'm currently working on a, uh, a quilt project that kind of like a granimals quilt project where you uh, put different uh, block sizes together because the blocks are all different sizes. Most of them are in the eight inch square range, but some of them are rectangle and some of them are a little, soft, a little larger, a little smaller. Um, so this block uh, arrangement and this quilt project, which isn't quite done yet, but I'm working on it, uh, should be available in the next coming months. Um, so what, what you mean, what you mean by great granimals? Well, it's, is it's because each um, each block is a different size. Some of them larger, some of them smaller, some of them square, some of them rectangle. Um, it's really hard to just do a simple a simple twelve block setting. So right. What this uh, project does, and I'm sorry, I don't have my example, is in the basement. That's here. okay. Um, basically, it takes those blocks and creates a, an interesting setting that alternates colors and then uh, arranges those blocks in a pieced arrangement based on size. So the, 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 uh, the project is going to have actually 17 different. Oh, wow. Blocks. It'll accommodate 17 different uh, bird blocks. Um, so so the nice thing about this is you can use it for any blocks, not just the bird blocks. So I'm very anxious to get that finished and get that out there. Um, I think it's going to be called the Big Day quilt. The Big Day? The Big Day. Um, this goes, this is kind of a terminology used in bird watching. Uh, the Big Day, the Big Year, actually the Big Year was a movie. Um, the big day is like a challenge. So you go out and if you're a bird washer, you go out and try to see as many different species of birds. In a okay, single in a single day. Week or year, then the big day, big year. Um, so the big day quilt is, you know, that thing that it kind of brings all. all I love it. Almost like a um, scrapbook, it brings all these different birds, different colors, different shapes, all into one block because, you know, on any given day, a walk in the woods or a walk by the shore, you might see birds that don't necessarily go together. I mean, like your beautiful quilt behind you, you know, all those colors combine to make a, you know, a, a gradated sort of uh, beautiful piece. You know, you might see a bright yellow bird the same day you see a, a, a spotted brown bird and they don't necessarily go together in a quilt, but they do in a, in, a, in a big day type of project. So. I see. Oh, I love that. So all of these people that have been collecting your blocks or making all of these quilt blocks, maybe orphan blocks, they could use this pattern to kind of bring it all together and um, simplify the piecing process of bringing all different size blocks into a quilt. So that's a brilliant yeah, idea, yeah. Joanne. It's, it's, it's sort of a great, uh, it could be potentially a great UFO together kind of thing. Oh, funny that you should mention UFOs because um, we have one, of two or, one or two of those. Yeah, I think we all have some of those and we have some of our um, members of Ahead of the Curve on right now. We've got Linda Ivy on and Kathy and Beverly Henyon. So welcome everybody. Um, we have been talking UFOs this year because it's one of my goals to finish UFOs. So I challenged my members to finish UFOs this year. So what we did is they're picking a different UFO for every month. As they finish them, they're posting them on our, on our Facebook group, and then they're getting rewarded for finishing their UFOs. We're gonna put their name in a drawing for every UFO that they finish, and I've got some cool prizes for them. So the whole point of that is sometimes we need a little incentive to finish our UFOs. Now, Joan, you don't have any UFOs, do you? No, not, not a single one. <laughs> well, I see one behind you that you finished recently. Yeah, Tell us yeah that, was, um, that was one of those rare occasions when I was uh, scrounging around in my, in my stash and just happened to run across a, a pile of blocks that hadn't been completed into a quilt. Um, I, it hardly ever, ever happens. <laughs> I'm telling a huge lie there because I have just as many of those as with, you know, I can, I'm right up there with the best of them, I assume. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> so these uh, blocks, you know, purple, can you tell purple is one of my favorite colors and the blocks, you can kind of see the pinwheel blocks there on the, on, in behind me. Yeah. Um, are uh, one of my favorite blocks, you know, they're, I, I don't know, I was doing some demos for the local quilt shop or something. 
and uh, the um, the so I just had this collection of these similar blocks and I had I think I'd, I'd already made a quilt with a one I had enough for like two quilts so I already oh, made okay. that last one on and I saved some of the setting triangles and some of the fabric that I had set aside that I used for the original quilt the first time through and then I said all right this is I really I it was just one of those things I pulled it out of the shelf to do some straightening and just said, I'm not putting it back until. Oh, started. good for you. Started, good for you. Just started clipping away at it a little bit. And, you know, here and there uh, it was one of those things, you know, I try to sew a little bit every morning and, you know, so I would sew a row together. If I had something come up that I needed to work on, you know, like a bird block or something, I would work on that, but you know, it would be kind of my fill in project. I go back to it and work on it a little bit every day until it got to the point where, I had um, ready to put borders on, and I don't know who was it. Somebody suggested <laughs> kind of, maybe I should put some applique. Y'all had hmm. that um, harsh, heavy lines. You know, the very sharp corners might nice have a nice softening effect. Uh, don't you think? Don't you think applique makes any pieced quilt just a little well, bit more I have special? To admit, it was um, it was a good idea. Well, and thank you. <laughs> Uh, uh, Sarah, somebody. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Uh, uh, Sue. It was uh, Sue. <laughs> had these really cool rulers that look kind of funky, and I've I've actually had a few of them in my stash for a while. And had you ever them, used them before? I had. I, ha I had not. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. You got them out and you them used out. them for your boarding. Woohoo! On this website, I think her name's Sue Pelland, and there are some basic instructions on making um, the curved leaves and petals. And so you can see that um, I used uh, some some of the, the tools to make some flowers and um, I have to say, though, Joan, you did the vines the hard way. <laughs> I know, I know. But... Joan used bias that she turned under the edges and sewed on those vines the traditional way. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 did a, I think I did a bias tube. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So I did a bias tube and I just snipped the, the bias, um, the, the seam very close yep. and folded it. And... Yeah. yeah, beautiful. So, it I came out absolutely beautiful. So, so Joan, this brings me to um, one of my questions that I always ask my guests. Do you keep your quilts? Do you give them away? What do you do with all of those quilts? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Um, yes, and yes, and no, and no, and <laughs> all of the above. <laughs> all of the above. So this quilt in particular is one that I'm planning to give away. But, you know, and you know, Sue, from uh, being in the industry, uh, I have a princess of the and the pea bed upstairs with a stack of quilts. Um, <laughs> How many I, do you think are in that stack? Oh, hundreds. Uh, really? Uh, I, didn't, I, I haven't done anything. I've given several away, family members, and, you know, whenever a gift occasion comes up. Um, but there's some that I, I can't part with because they're part of a book or, you know, they, yeah. they, I, I don't travel and teach as much as I used to, basically at all anymore. Um, and so, but when I was, I needed to have those quilts so I could take them on trunk shows and, you know, for sure. to hang in the booths and all that stuff. So there were some that I really couldn't part with. And I, I just haven't gotten around to putting those to work. But this one in particular um, is a really good example of the type of project that I, I just love to embrace. Um, about the same time that I pulled that box out of that cupboard uh, was probably about a year ago. And the um, invasion in Ukraine had um, oh, yeah. and had just happened. And that really struck me very personally because I've, uh, I'm not Ukrainian. I am Polish, though which is, um, you know, same general part of the world. And it struck me because there's so much, um, it, it, it's just, it was just hard. And I think it was hard for everyone to watch uh, the destruction, the, the mm. people that were losing their livelihoods and, and leaving their own country. Um, I've traveled in that part of the world and this is a very proud 
uh, part of uh, Europe, Eastern Europe, all of Eastern Europe is, yeah. is has very deep, um, deep history and tradition um, based going back many, many years. And so, and I used to make Ukrainian eggs with my girlfriends back in high school days. And um, so it really just struck me as very difficult. And I talked to my friend, Beth, who is part of the, she is uh, uh, the head of a refugee resettlement agency here in my local area. And I said, you know, I, I'm making this quilt and I would love to present it to to you to present to a Ukrainian family. And she, I said, what, what, I asked her, you know, what is, this was very early and, you know, people were leaving Ukraine for Poland and other parts of, of Europe. And I said, you know, are we going to see any of these refugees? And she said, oh, absolutely we will. And, um, but, you know, it takes some time and there's, there's papers and procedures to go through, but she and I had a conversation and, you know, we can link to that. Uh, I don't know if we've got the opportunity to, to link to that. Yeah, yeah, we certainly can. I'll be putting um, some notes in my newsletter as well, Joan, so we'll link to it there. And then we'll make a blog post about this. We can link okay, to this perfect. interview. And... I, have a, I, I did ha uh, record a conversation with her. She goes into okay, good. Great, uh, uh, great detail about refugee resettlement and mm -hmm. what's involved and uh, the types of organizations that are in all the local communities, uh, virtually all the local communities across the country. So that eventually as these refugees, and you know, right now we've still got the Ukrainian situation. Now there's uh, natural disasters, the earthquakes in Turkey and Syria. Right. Oh, you know, and there's, there's always a, a, a refugee issue. And these people have are leaving or have left everything they know for, um, other parts of the world with basically the clothes on their back. Right. So the refugee resettlement organizations do such a nice job. They work with the community, they get donations, they set up um, the refugees with an apartment. And how nice is it for um, these new, new people to come to our country and be welcomed by, you know, a furnished apartment with the quilts. Oh my gosh, that just, yeah. you just gave me goosebumps, Joan. <laughs> so it's, it's a wonderful, and so you're wondering, why is this still here? Well, Beth and I have um, tried to connect with, um, you know, a, an event or something so that I can present the quilt and it will be presented to Ukrainian family. But again, early on, uh, you know, there was a big effort to get quilts and things shipped over to uh, Poland and places where these mm -hmm. refugees were going. And so many of these places are a way station and they're only there for a short period of time. So keeping and, and hanging on to these things is, could, could be rather difficult. Um, so she said, you know, eventually these people will be coming here. So don't let, um, you know, don't let the, 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 the interest in, in helping fade. And again, yes, yes. Are constant. there's always uh, political unrest someplace, natural disasters, like we've talked about the earthquakes and floods and whatever. Um, as well as, you know, conflict. Um, right, right. So, the, so there's always a need right here, right here in our own communities. And the, 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 the nice thing is this stuff stays right in your local community and it helps. Um, I mean, they, they, these uh, refugee resettlement organizations, oftentimes um, they're attached to or sponsored by a religious organization, but that doesn't limit who they help. So yes. I think, if I recall correctly, Beth's organization is, um, like a, their parent organization is a Lutheran uh, mm -hmm. organization, but they, they're not limited to helping, uh, you know, they don't limit themselves into religious sex or any of that stuff. So they go, um, the, the help goes where it's needed. Absolutely. So it's really, really an exciting conversation that I had with Beth, and I'm glad that we'll be able to link to it. At some yeah, point. this will be a great opportunity to bring that back and where, especially with the Ukraine situation continuing on for such an extended period of time and these other natural disasters that recently happened. I think this conversation is so important, um, Joan. You know, yesterday, I didn't really know what direction this conversation was going to go. And today, I am thrilled to have it go in this direction. Um, so you know, so this is wonderful. So many and you mentioned the whole UFO, UFO thing. I mean, this yeah. was a, a, a box of blocks. Mm -hmm. myself. And look at it now, it's gorgeous. And so I got to experiment with a new technique. I learned, uh, you know, so I, 
uh, you know, I, I did the, you benefit from it venture together, but I benefited from yeah. putting together the rest of the quilt. Uh, you know, I learned about this, this ruler that I had in my stash and how to <laughs> use it and how to make it, um, just add that special extra thing. Yeah. I don't need another quilt for my princess and the pee bed. Um, <laughs> It's a beautiful quilt and that someone will really enjoy it and appreciate it. And it doesn't absolutely matter, uh, if it's done now or done in two weeks or done in a year, uh, there will always be a refugee um, organization locally that can use this. There's so much need in the community. So this is this is one of my favorite things, because, you know, when um, I, oftentimes Dave and I go to uh, the, the local orchestra, community orchestra has a a free concert on July 4th. And almost always there is a naturalization citizenship, uh, you know, people taking the oath of citizenship. Oh, I, oh. Even just now thinking about it, I, I feel, yeah. I, I just feel, it's just it's so, emotional, uh, isn't it? It is. It's, it's, it's emotional. Thing. It's, um, you know, these people are uh, pledging their, their allegiance to, to a country that, that accepted them. Yeah. And so this is, um, it's, it's a really cool, it's oh a my really gosh. Cool thing to do. Goosebumps all over. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I love this Joan. So, um, and they don't just need quilts. I mean, that's, that's the other, yeah. uh, you know, when you think about what you're, you know, somebody moving into their first apartment, because again, they come basically with the clothes on their back. So come on, someone coming to their new apartment is going to need pots and pans and, pot holders and placemats and towels and, um, you know, things for the beds, things, it, it, there's, there's all kinds of things uh, that we can put our, our craftiness to work to assist. I love so, it. And, I and love local it. Local organizations have lists and lists of things that, uh, you know, it's, it's just a matter of doing a little digging into your local mm -hmm. community. And so I'm sure how, I'll be happy to hear from you. How would we go about finding an organization like that just type it into google refugee organization worcester massachusetts well um yeah Raf i i i'm gonna i'm gonna defer this to the video with beth because okay she is um, she she gave some really good um, information about how to find those in the local community and she even offered her own agency to help connect Oh, agencies uh, outside of of this area because obviously I'm in Syracuse. She's in the Syracuse area. Okay, uh, perfect. Are, like um, it, like any organization, there's like a, a hierarchy, like a with national and regional areas, and um, you know she gave some really good advice on that in that conversation that I had with her, much like we're having right now, right. about um, how to go about finding uh, perfect a, a refugee resettlement organization. Perfect. Um, in your own community. So I'll, I'll defer to that because um, she, she she's the expert. So I, okay. I, the conversation was a while ago, so I probably will misquote. Okay, great. So we'll take a look at that video Definitely that you that you made. Was that a Facebook uh, live type of thing? It wasn't a Facebook live. It was a Zoom conversation, and I okay. recorded it and then embedded it in my in my blog. And oh, I so so I can link to your blog. Perfect. Yeah, I'll I'll send you the exact link for the exact blog post. Okay. Uh, it was back in April of 2022. That, okay. That took place. Excellent. I I so, love that we're bringing this back up again because it's so important and it's so timely and it's so timeless. It's exactly. there. There will always be a need. Wonderful. Well, and it, and when you unfortunately, think about it, right? Well, uh, exactly. But I mean, if you're Again, this was in a box on my shelf. Think about the things that the, th the beautiful things that, that these women left. Think shelf. about what what these women left behind their beautiful things on their shelves. And can you imagine sharing what we have with somebody that left so much behind? I just think that that's amazing. I, it's um, it, it, yes, it's extremely gratifying and yeah. much appreciated. Yeah, um, you know, there's they're starting with nothing, and so mm -hmm. you know this. The when you walk in and you see a, a quilt draped on a couch, um, in any living room, it just adds that you know, homey, that homey feel, and and kindness, and mm -hmm. you know, and and nobody's gonna look 
real close at <laughs> flowers and say, you know, this looks like a beginner did this. And because a beginner did do that. Uh, and and I, nobody's going to criticize that. And it, it's, it's, everybody wins. I mean, I got to try something new and someone is going to have a, a really nice project. I love it, Joan. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for sharing this really special project. I did not anticipate this coming up in our conversation. What I thought we were going to talk about was um, your Heartfuls project. So oh. I, I, I hate to change the conversation, but I want to because this is something that really spoke to me when you started another project that's also very community oriented. So I am learning so much about Joan Ford and her big heart right now. <laughs> well, and I have to say, um, the same the same event sparked the the hearts um, this Heartfuls project because uh, at the time the of the Ukraine invasion. Everybody was looking to show their support. Everybody in the U.S., you know this. Um, uh, so I created, and I don't, I don't think I have one here handy, but I created a little heart, um, a little heart, a little mm -hmm. like maybe about <laughs> an inch, two inches, two inches tall, um, with um, interfacing and applique that had a, a, a sky blue, uh, like a the color of the Ukrainian flag, the blue flag and the sunflower. Oh, yes, they're, yes. They're a flower, um, so for Ukraine. And I, I put that out relatively shortly after the invasion and uh, put it out as a, as a free pattern. Oh, and that's how the Heartful started. That's how the Heartful started. It okay. And I, um, through my embroidery guild, uh, few months later learned that um, the local hospice was the recipient of one of our projects and I ended things with the local uh, the local uh, embroidery guild just be just too many things going on in my life at that point um, so I approached my neighbor who worked in palliative care and um, he works at a hospital and I said I showed him some of my hearts and I said what do you think you, you know can you use these in your in your in your hospital environment he said you know what our hospital environment is very sterile very hospitally <laughs> if that's, that's, funny. But, <laughs> that's um, a word <laughs> we're gonna make it a word <laughs> just made it up so um so but you need to talk to here's the name here's the hospice and you know go visit with them and show them what you've got here Meanwhile, I want one of these for my sister who loves cardinals. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you went from so you went from sunflowers to birds. Typical, so Joan. Sunflowers. So, so this is this is an example. So this is about. Oh, oh, is that gorgeous? So what happened is I showed him some of these, and he said, "You need to go show this to the hospice." So I made a point, made an appointment with them. Um, and what they are doing is they're using these on the door, particularly when there, you know, might be uh, hospices, you know, where people go to spend their their lives, last days. So they're, yeah. they're no longer uh, responding to hospital um, care, uh, so they go to hospice. They're comfort. They're in a, a home environment where they're comfortable, and so uh, they they put the hearts on the door. Um, so that if there's if someone approaches the end of life, um, people you know enter the room with a bit more respect, or you know walk the hallways with a, with you know a little bit more um, quiet time. You know there might be some some things going on in the room that you know, deserve a little bit of um, a quiet time and uh, privacy and mm -hmm. privacy reflection that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So. I showed these to the hospice um, people and they were all over it. And so I began making, so they took all of all the hearts. They said, oh, and by the way, we want some small ones too. So I started making them because they use them, they give them to their volunteers. Uh, I haven't put those in a pattern, but I started making uh, some of these from, uh, um, this is felt, wool felt embroidery. They've got stiff stuff. Your yeah. your friend and mine, Joan Hawley, um, was one of the ones that encouraged me to use stiff stuff, which is kind of makes for a nice, oh, nice, um, yeah, professional finish to it. And the, the hearts also have a oh, kind hand of a, stitching what, around what the edge. This kind of a um, pie crust kind of uh, texture. 
pretty like a, a blanket stitch around a buttonhole stitch around the outside edge so um so, so i created some of these i i had i had i decided to use wool applique because there's, they're not that wool is easy to do applique um you, you're the applique queen you know this right <laughs> you don't have to fold down the edges and on something like this i didn't want to get too heavy into i bet you could use i bet you could make some really cool stuff with you know oh yeah with fusible applique okay <laughs> i'm thinking i'm thinking there's some potential hearts in you know all right um so um so I, I, I made, I, I had a candle mat that I kit that, you know, not that I have any UFOs, but I, I happened to find another, another project in my, in my stash. And it was a candle mat that I never quite got around to making. It had a little chickadee on it. So I made, okay. it up, you know, in the, in, with the art and put the shape on and all that stuff. And I thought, you know, I'm so much into the bird thing. It's sort of a passion of mine. What, what other, bro, oh my gosh, a cardinal. And the cardinal is significant because the cardinal has, um, in legend, a connection to people who have passed. Yes. When the cardinal is here, loved ones are near. That you know, there's there's that. Plus, there's all kinds of um, legendary connected to native native peoples. You know, with the bright color of the cardinal. So, the cardinal was one of the first uh, projects that I put together. And then I thought, well, you know, I can't just I I need to share this. And so. Yeah. That's when this became, long story short, that's when this became um, Heartfuls, which is basically um, kits that you get a kit, you get all the guts, you know, all the stuff to make um, the, the stiff stuff interfacing, the fusibles. Um, Does it come with the the um, wool and everything? Kit. Everything, it, the wool, the, the embroidery um, floss, the background. The only thing is not the embroidery. So many people who do wool applique already have tons and tons right. of them. Right. And I was struggling with finding the floss in um, in a wholesale sort of process so that I could include but it. But like in like you said, so many people have that already. And, so the, needles and the, the floss are not included. OK, but, uh, but everything on, else you need on my website, there's there's a whole section about heart goals and uh, resources and places that I, you know, the, the floss and things that I really like, all this good stuff. And there's a detailed video on how to put together each step of the process. Because it Look is at that. Like I'm, I'm looking at this on my screen. Hold on just a second. Uh, we're going to look at sharing my screen and looking at the Heartfuls page on your website. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. How beautiful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so some you're seeing some of the other designs everybody loves the butterfly the butterfly is not quite available yet because it's very detailed yeah to get that pattern just right before i put it out but there's oh that is gorgeous when you have that butterfly done i'm going to need some of those <laughs> <laughs> oh and here's your story so, here's how it all so started the, that's what's yeah, beautiful. Well, this is where you can go and find out more about Heartfuls. So I'm going to put that link over on the comments as well. Yeah, that's and they're you know what's nice about the Heartfuls is that they. I mean, I for me it was a way to connect to the hospice. To again, I got a stack full of quilts on the on the princess and the pea bed. I don't need more quilts, but I like to keep stitching. I like to do things. I want to keep my hands busy. I want to. I want to use the creativity. So this is a small. So here's a. a, a fun. Oh, how cute! So this is a small project, very portable. Uh, you know, I can. In fact, I did just take a bunch of them on, on the cruise to Hawaii that I did. That's been postponed a million, a million times. So um, they make great gifts. You know, hang them on a doorknob. Hang them in the. There's one hanging in my entryway now. Um, you know. Uh, baby room, you know, something bright and sunny. Oh my gosh. Door. I can, I can see them on every door at my mom's facility. She has an independent living facility. They would be on every single door if people knew how to Absolutely. make these. During the cruise, I, I mentioned, I just got back from a cruise. We had a door decoration thing and I got those little, you know, the things that you put the plastic. Yes. Yes. You pull a thing off the, the stick. There's a sticky part that goes on the door. There's a plastic, heavy plastic part. There's a hook. <laughs> And the sticky part comes off after you're done. And these are so light that, you know, I just needed a really tiny little, little hooky thing. And yeah, excellent. With these things. 
So, so cute. So cute. So, yeah, but that so, can be used anywhere, like a baby's room or um, window. So, Joan, you started this as a project for hospice, and then you turned it into a product so that you could get other people making these and po potentially also donating to hospice. Absolutely. So is the information about hospice in um in well, any I, on your website anywhere because i think it's, it's every community has ha, yeah. independent hospice and yeah. it's just a matter of picking up the phone and mm -hmm. talking to their um you know their development director or their president or their yeah. you know the, the person in charge of the, the residents um to the resident life okay great that's so a great idea I would, I would avoid the hospitals uh, as my neighbor was very honest in saying you know the hospitals tend to be a little bit more of a sterile environment um you know this isn't something that you want to have to put through a laundry or any of that yeah. so, so yeah. you know this is the hospice it tends to be i mean ours is called francis house it is a house that's been converted to a medical facility for uh, you know end of life situations so yeah but it doesn't have to be for hospice I mean, right right we all we know people that would appreciate food. these each kid has the materials to make two so Again, oh. my concept is make one for me. Yeah, and one to give. Away. So. I love it. I love it. Oh my gosh, Joan, you have so many wonderful ideas about connecting with your local community and using your gifts and talents to give back to your local community. Well, and this so is just so wonderful. It feels selfish because you know one of the one of the reasons I, I developed this is I wanted something to do that was creative that yeah. was that I could you know that that someone that would could be put to good use and, and you're sharing this with the world what is selfish about that nothing 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 selfish uh, about that I think start somewhere <laughs> oh I love it I love it you're giving everybody such great ideas on how they can um, stop adding to their princess in the pea bed and use their handwork and their talents to really impact somebody else's I'm sure life i'm not the only one with a princess in the pea bed come on uh, i don't have a princess in the pea bed but i do have a shelf over there behind this quilt is a shelf <laughs> that is jam-packed with quilts so i grabbed a quilt today that i will donate i have two of them in two different colors so it's a it's a quilt sample for me for a, a pattern but i've got an extra one and now that i'm not doing shows anymore i can absolutely part with one of those quilts so I, yes I your quilts your quilts are part of, you know, they're kind of part of your family, right? They're, they're like your little babies. But at some point, those babies can fly the coop. <laughs> well, think about what those babies would be doing. Exactly. I mean, it's, I mean are, they, are they helping anybody? They're not keeping my shelf warm, I'll tell you that. Are they making that, that shelf feel nice and cozy? Yeah, good, no, or, not at all necessary. Or, so good, good. You've given me the inspiration to call through my quilt. All of those UFOs too. Yes. And again, I'm just as guilty as the next person with the, the UFOs. I, I have four of those quilts right there. See, see there you go. And yeah, and that red one is a UFO that's going to become a larger quilt. You see an extra block up there on the wall? That one's going to become a queen-size quilt with the reds. Nice. Um, but yeah, that. we it's all pretty. have UFOs that we want to... Um, that are this close to being done. Yes, and all that fabric and all that expense or all that um, stash that we've used let's make something that's going to really warm somebody's heart and warm somebody's bed see and sometimes you know you say it's it's good to have an incentive to finish things up yeah and you know i, I go back to that selfish comment uh because if it makes me feel good that's sometimes that's incentive enough if it makes me yeah feel like i'm doing something yeah other than you know adding to this the princess i love it back. Yeah, so, we. I think we can all think about our UFOs in a different way now. We can think about how they can impact somebody else's life and not just that feeling of accomplishment for ourselves, but that that um, just that warm, amazing feeling you get from giving. So excellent. I'm going to go through my UFO stash in a whole new light and get some things done. So everybody that's on the UFO challenge, think about this. I know that you may not need another quilt. Your grandchildren may not need their second or third quilt, but there are people out there that would love and cherish these homemade beauties 
um, especially I love the idea of the refugee resettlement organization. So Joan, thank you for sharing that with us. That is such an important thing um, that quilters, quilters love to give. They love to give, um, but sometimes you just think, where where am I going to have an impact? Where is this going to go to somebody that really needs it? And I love the idea of the refugee settlement. That's perfect. Well, and there's there's so many places that can use quilts, and yes. lots of times the focus is on children's quilts. But the nice thing about uh, the refugee set resettlement stuff is these are whole families with yeah. children and adults that um, all have you know, the, the whole household needs, has a need to fill. Yeah, excellent. Oh my gosh, that's wonderful. I'm just going to throw this list of questions right out the window, Joan, because we have had such a more impactful and important conversation than, um, it, you know, the the usual questions that I ask my guests. So thank you for that. Thanks well, for redirecting our conversation. It's, it's been, uh, I, I really appreciate the opportunity to share some of these thoughts. As you can tell, you know, I, I tend to pick things that I'm really passionate about to yes. really dig in and, uh, uh, I don't know, I call it exploit, but, you know, when I say exploit, exploit for my own, for my own interest, um, you know, just, I, I don't just touch on things. I like to really dig deep and challenge myself. Um, and if somebody else benefits even better, uh, yeah. and it, it's, uh, again, there's lots of different organizations that, uh, are certainly happy to accept the things that we make, but um, perfect. You know, finding the thing that that makes your heart sing too. Um, yeah. That that uh, you know we we put a lot. We quilters put and grafters put a lot of energy into making things beautiful, making beautiful things. Um, hey, share that. I mean, how cool? How cool. Exactly. That and, and it's wonderful to. I mean, Sue, you and I have been, have been chatting, just chatting for, I don't know, it seems like forever. Um, and it always, the conversation is always very easy. And, you know, it's like we just jump in as if we uh, you know, hadn't had a, a moment apart. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's what friends are. <laughs> right. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's really very gratifying to have. And you know what? I feel that way with so many of my quilter friends because we have this common bond that is an instant link. We have instant fodder for our conversation because we're all um, uh, craftsy people, but we're also, we have that aspect of wanting to bring that art or that passion to other people. Now, whether it's in teaching or sharing something like this, um, that every quilter has uh, something in their heart that draws them to this conversation. So, so I, you know, I have to ask you this. Um, I mean, this is your time, but I, um, when, when Dave and I go to, uh, I don't know, a, an event or something that we've, we've not gone to before, do you, find, he just kind of sits back and waits for me to connect with another quilter. <laughs> And like, it seems like it always happens within like, an hour. Oh, okay. For a weekend someplace, for a weekend long event. Yeah. And within an hour, I have found a <laughs> quilter. <laughs> and he stands back and says, okay. Well, I love it. I love it. Can I, too? can I tell you a quick story? Absolutely. I went for my annual slamogram last week. <laughs> And I'm talking to the technician who's somebody that I didn't know. Usually it's the same woman all, every year, every year. And there's a quilt hanging on the wall because our guild, do, or one of the members of our guild donated one um, to the center to make it more homey when you're going in for your annual mammogram. So um, this quilt's hanging on the wall. I'm seeing this new technician and she's making idle conversation as she's lifting and moving me into the machine. <laughs> We all, we all know the truth. <laughs> Apologize to any of the men listening. <laughs> and she said, you know, what do you do for a living? So I told her that I'm a quilting teacher. And her face just lit up <laughs> because her 17-year-old daughter said, Mom, just a week or two ago, Mom, I want to make a quilt together. 
and neither of them has ever quilted before. So just like you said, there's always somebody in the room that has some connection to quilting. And that was the whole conversation for the rest of the half an hour we were together. And now I've connected her with a friend of mine that teaches making a t-shirt quilt, which is exactly what her daughter wanted to do. So yes, uh, quilters have this instant ability to make these connections and to just find something in common with other quilters. And, it, and it's all like fast friends. It's an immediate connection that we all have together, which well, is it's wonderful. Like radar. It's like this, the, it's like quilting uh, radar. How do we know to even bring up that topic? We're talking about <laughs> how can we not talk about yeah. quilting? <laughs> Now, Joan, I've got one more question for you. I, I know that you love to travel and you mentioned going to Poland and going to that area. And I just love following your travel stories. And when I went on your Facebook page today, your personal Facebook page, I saw your beautiful Ukrainian eggs. And you mentioned it earlier that you used to do this in college. You did the Ukrainian egg, egg decorating. Yeah, um, actually, it goes back even f uh, further than that. I, I, I had a high school f girlfriend who did um, Ukrainian eggs every year. And she invited a bunch of us to her house at Easter time. Oh, I've always and, wanted to do that. Yeah, it's, you know, and I haven't done it for years and years. But I still have um, because I did it for a few oh. years. Um, you basically start uh, the, the whole the whole process of making Ukrainian eggs. And I put that up on my Facebook page right after the invasion because everybody was talking about you know, the, the horribleness. And it was like, I wanted to, and I still want to, um, uh, recognize that, you know, this is what we risk losing is, you know, this wonderful tradition. And those, that is Ukrainian. Um, the yeah. Polish have a different way. They're called Pisanki. Um, the Polish have a different way of doing it. It's like a, a, a wax resist process where you put layers and layers of, of beeswax in the, case, in the case of Ukrainian eggs on the egg. Um, so you put the, the first layer on everything you want to be white and then you dip it in the next, the next color, which is usually yellow. Comes out of the dye, you put uh, wax on everything you want to end up yellow. That goes into the orange, for example. And then you pull it out and put every, wax on everything you want to be orange. And you just continue this process one layer at a time until you finally finish up with black. Oh, they're like beautiful. Black. Just beautiful. And then you take the wax off after all of the colors, um, you know, after dyeing all the different sections, and you take the wax off and uh, you've got this beautiful egg. You'll typically either varnish it or whatever. The, the dyes are not edible. Um, so these are not Easter eggs to eat, um, but they, and lots of times they're blown out. Yeah, um, yeah. I never had the guts to blow out the eggs because I could picture really? them, it can collapse. <laughs> oh, see. So um, they, they dry up. Um, yeah. So there's, so you basically start with it um, and, and, um, and do a water, a, a raw egg. So, uh, so yeah, that goes back to... Um, high school and you know girlfriends in, inviting a bunch of friends over to to learn this process and we made a very simple simple egg and then i just kind of picked up on it because oh yeah, my gosh they are I absolutely just, beautiful I can't just do one <laughs> doing, you know several dozen over the course of i don't know four or five years i haven't done it in, in many years now but i still have the dyes to come with me well i tell you I would love to make a date and make eggs with you because I've always wanted to do it. And a funny little connection here. When my mom had her quilt shop way back when, she brought somebody in to do a Ukrainian egg decorating class wow. at our quilt shop. And I don't know why I didn't do it, but I do remember that I did not do the class. I can't remember why. But um, yeah, isn't that a funny little connection? And I've got one more little silly thing. My daughter took one of the um, the aptitude tests when she was in high school, and I think it's for the military, and they told her she would be very good at Ukrainian egg decorating. Wow. That was actually a result of that aptitude test. Wow, we, that, really, that really is interesting. Isn't I, that crazy? I can see the skills, uh, you know, you, you have to have patience. It, yeah. It's not an instant gratification thing it, because it's, it's the several layers are done over time um, i can't imagine why an aptitude test would come out with that conclusion it was know, so right? strange that is, like, but we always talk know. about it that was such a funny result of that test so that is, that is, uh, so i think my daughter and i need to do it together yeah I that there are specific um, um, 
characteristics that, that are probably pretty close to the characteristics of a quilter. Exactly. <laughs> well, this has been fantastic, Joan. I've so enjoyed my conversation with you this morning. I know <laughs> that all of our listeners out there are also enjoying this conversation. So why don't we spend a little time, get together, and um, link your blog post to my blog post this this week and then we'll get it out there on Facebook that we have this blog post and we have these ideas on how you can finish your UFOs put them to great use find an organization that needs quilts and um, the other thing is if you'd like a smaller project those heartfuls are such a beautiful project with such a warm and um, uh, comforting message behind them and if you do want to make one for yourself and share one maybe with hospice or a local senior um, Joan has these amazing kits all made up for you with all the supplies you need so don't forget to check out Joan at hummingbird-highway.com right Joan dash highway that's right <laughs> right Excellent. And I likewise too. It's always a joy. It's always a pleasure to chat with you. And I, I uh, like you. I, I had this on my my calendar yesterday, and I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to talk about, but you know, still is out <laughs> somehow. And uh, you know, just to, it it doesn't take much to sort of get us off on a, a tangent that. Um, and a, and was, a very good one. A very good positive so I message. The opportunity to oh. share some of this passion, and I know we both share. Um, the quilty stuff with a, with a deep passion as well. So we do. Quite and a pleasure to have this conversation. And for me too, Joan. Thank you so much. And speaking of sharing, make sure you like and share this post so that other people can find out about all the different ways that they can have an impact in their local community with their handcrafting skills, whether it's embroidery, making these beautiful heartfuls, or making beautiful quills. Joan, thank you so much for being my guest today. I look forward to seeing you again soon. My goodness, we could have had another hour to talk together. I know, right? <laughs> but we'll we'll do it again. Okay. Okay. That, that sounds like a good plan. Excellent. Take care, everybody. It's been wonderful having you all here on Sewing in Slippers with Sue and Joan Ford from Hummingbird Highway. Bye, everyone.